hate it. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Now if this is your first time coming across the channel, please consider subscribing. I like to think that we have some pretty cool content here. We also have some shit content. What are you gonna do? So for today, we are finally making another video on the Ortur laser engraver. Holy that was awesome. <laughs> Woo. All right, here it is. This is the Ortur LaserMaster 2S2, along with the Air Assist and the rotary tool. Then we got our power adapters and the communication cable. This is a 10 watt laser, and you'd be looking at somewhere in the five to 600, $650 range to have everything that you see right here. And I will have Amazon links in the description below. Now today we are not gonna be talking about the laser engraver cutting on flat surfaces. We are actually gonna be working with the rotary tool right here. This is something that you would use to do engraving on a glass or a tumbler or a cup, any kind of a cylinder with a contoured surface where you obviously could not engrave on a flat plane. All right, so this here is the Ortur YYR 2.0 rotary roller, and you can pick these things up for about 80 bucks on Amazon. They're really easy to connect to your laser engraver. It comes with a single connector here that will connect to your laser engraver. And then you have two sets of rollers. They kind of have like a silicone rubber type texture to them for a little extra grip. Then you can see here we got our stepper motor and you got some gears for the drive on this thing and all these can be adjusted. You can move this roller over a couple spaces. It depends on how big of a cylinder that you're putting on this rotary tool. All right, you can see here on the back side we have these other set of rollers and these are adjustable. They'll adjust up or down. And the reason for these is in case you have a cylinder that is not consistent uh, in diameter from the top to the bottom, this has a slight taper to it. So in this case, we would put it on the rotary tool and the bottom side of it would sit on these auxiliary rollers. And we would adjust the height accordingly so that when you engrave, you're engraving across a level surface. Subscribe. So that leads us to today's project, which is gonna be engraving uh, the Spicer Designs logo on this Yeti tumbler. So we're gonna go over the complete setup on the rotary tool to the laser engraver, and we're gonna go over some of the software settings in Lightburn as well. The only thing left for me to do is to shut the hell up and get started. The first step of the setup on this rotary tool connecting to the laser engraver itself well, you can already see our dilemma here. The rotary tool sits a lot higher than something that would normally be on a flat surface, and there's not enough range and height on the laser head to get above the rotary tool, especially once you go and throw some kind of a cylinder or a cup or tumbler in this case on that rotary tool. You can't even see the laser head anymore. We need to be well above this thing so we can engrave on it. What we need to do is we need to raise this laser engraver up to a height where it can accommodate the rotary tool and the object that you plan on putting on it. And what they recommend on doing this is these cans of Keystone Light. Now these are the perfect height. It's what they recommend in the manual. So we're gonna use these, put them underneath each leg, get this thing raised up, and then we can move on to the next step. Convenient. Now you can pick up these Keystone risers at your local liquor store or grocery store. All right, you can see now that we've raised the laser engraver up, that we have proper clearance now underneath that laser head. The rotary tool fits underneath here without any issue. And when we throw our tumbler on there, there is still plenty of room for the laser head to move right over that tumbler. Son of a Idiot. Like I was saying, there is now plenty of room for this laser head to be adjusted to fit right over the top of the tumbler. So, on to the next step. Can waste beer. That's the worst part. Now we're going to take the connector off of the rotary tool and we're going to connect it into the signal wire to the Y-axis stepper motor. So in order to do that, we need to unplug the signal cable from the Y stepper motor. And we're simply gonna take that and plug it into the connector off of the rotary tool. By doing that, now, the laser engraver Y-axis will no longer move forward and backward. Instead, it will now turn the rollers on the rotary tool. All right, now 
for the boring part. Now for anyone that is not interested in all the setup on the rotary tool, you might want to just skip through this part. The part coming up after this, I think you're going to like. We're going to get into the Lightburn software, make some changes in the settings so that it can communicate with that rotary tool. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer so we can get in these settings, make some adjustments so we can get started on the project. <sighs> yeah. All right, the very first step, we are going to go into the Lightburn settings. This could either be under edit by device settings and machine settings. You might see uh, just the settings option right there. I have the newest version, so you have to go over to the Lightburn tab, go to preferences, and here we are in settings. Now, there's only one thing we need to turn on in here, and that is show rotary enable on main window. We're gonna go ahead and toggle that on and hit okay. Easy. All right, step number two, we're gonna to go to edit. We're gonna to go to machine settings. In machine settings, the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to save all of these settings for a default just to do normal flat surface laser engraving. So you're gonna just go to save file and you're gonna save it wherever you want to. Then you can come back and reload that file. It makes it very easy to transition from the flat laser engraving to the rotary tool. So in order to use the rotary tool, we're gonna to go ahead and change a couple of these settings. There's only three things that we need to toggle off in here, and that is the soft limits. We're gonna to toggle that to false, the hard limits to false, and the homing cycle to false. Once we have done that, we're going to save that file, and we can go ahead and save that as a default rotary settings, whatever you wanna save it under. Once you go ahead and toggle these three items to false, and save that file, you're gonna go ahead and hit the right button, which will then activate those settings into the software so you can use your rotary tool. Once we do all that, you're gonna hit okay. Hey, what are you, you can't suntan on this thing, get out of here. <laughs> and now we can go over to this laser section right here and you're gonna to wanna to hit enable rotary. All right, the next step, we're gonna go into edit again. We're gonna to go to device settings this time and we're going to toggle off the auto home on startup. And then we're gonna hit okay. Still pretty easy, but now it gets tricky. All right, the last step to this process, we're gonna go over to laser tools, rotary setup. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have roller selected, enable rotary on. Now here's some very important settings that we're gonna to need to calculate based off of the dimensions on the cylinder object that we're gonna be using on the rotary tool and on the rotary tool itself. So for this part, you are gonna need a caliper. Now I was corrected in my last laser video that this is a caliper, I'm well aware of that. Um, I refer to it as a micrometer, which it also is. Any device that measures components accurately or precise is considered a micrometer. So it's just kind of a general term. I will have Amazon links for this in the description in case you do not have one of these. All right, the first dimension that we're gonna plug in is going to be the roller diameter right here. So we're gonna go ahead and put the micrometer here or caliper on that and we have 19.64. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug that number in right here to 19.64 millimeters. The next thing we have here is our object diameter now you will not need to calculate the circumference. It will automatically do that for you. All right, so now we're gonna measure the diameter of this tumbler. I'm gonna do it right in the section that I want to engrave on because it does have a taper to it, so it is different from the bottom to the top. So we're looking at about 86 millimeters. So we'll plug in the 86 millimeters right here. And you can see it already recalculated the circumference. Now these are all the measurements that we're able to measure and input into this section here. Now this number is where it gets a little bit tricky, the millimeters per rotation. What they mean by this is when those rollers spin, it's giving you uh, some kind of a distance there on a full rotation between your rollers and the actual object. So as those rollers are spinning, this is spinning and it wants to see what a full rotation is. So the best way to calculate that number or to kind of start the trial and error process is you're going to want to remember this number, 270.177 millimeters. The circumference of your object, you need to write that number down. So for right now, we're going to hit OK. Then we need to go onto our drawing board here. We're going to make a rectangular object. 
And you can see up here the dimensions of it. So what we want our height to be is the circumference of our cylinder object, which is 270.177. Now for the width, you could just do like say four millimeters. So what we have here by making this object is the length of that is the total circumference all the way around the cylinder. So what we want to do is put some masking tape around this. We're going to do a couple of test runs. We want to make sure that when it engraves that rectangular object all the way around this, that each end meets in the exact same spot to give us the perfect distance. And if it's a little bit short, then we'll need to add on to that millimeters per rotation number. If it overlaps a little bit, we'll need to subtract some from it. You just got to mess around with that number, do a couple of test runs until eventually you get it to land right in the same spot. You want to keep your power low, otherwise it'll go right through that tape and it'll burn into the object that you're wanting to engrave, which will basically ruin it. All right, you can see here where it's kind of dark, we had a slight overlap, which means that that number in millimeters per rotation is a little bit too big. So we're gonna shrink that down a little bit so that these two pieces right here coming across, we want them to land right at the same place. If you don't get that number just right, what it'll do is it'll distort your image. It will either stretch it out wide or tall, and it won't be proportional to what you actually have on your screen. All right, so here I've got my logo, and I set the dimensions to how big I want it to be on that tumbler. Over here I have it set to fill, and I have the power set at 500 and 100% output. Another thing I think is important is to put your job origin right here in the center. It allows you to center your image easier on that cylinder. Now here looking at your machine setup, one thing I didn't mention before is you can kind of look over the top of this and you can get your x-axis gantry right in line with the roller so that you know that it's parallel with the laser engraving machine. By having it set to current position on the software, I could basically move the head right where I want it to start at. And since I have that origin on the center left side, that's gonna be the top middle of where the design is gonna start at. And then I also centered the tumbler in the rotary roller. So by doing all this, it should print out nice and centered on that tumbler. Now you can either watch the laser engraver do its work on this tumbler, or you can watch the Keystone Girl jump rope. nip slip that's fine all right that's gonna wrap it up for today's video I got this tumbler all engraved it took about an hour and 20 minutes to do that engraving on that uh, I probably could have messed with the settings a little bit better or went over it one more time to get it to burn through that coating on this Yeti cup a little bit better but that was not the point of this video the point of this video was to show you how the rotary tool works with the laser engraver and give you the complete setup process and all the software. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Do it. Now, if you did not agree with the way I used the Keystone Girl, AKA my wife, in today's video, I just want you to know that I hear you and I really don't give a f <laughs> It's my channel. Again, I will have links in the description for everything that you saw here in the video today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. The links for the machine and the stuff you used? No, the links for the bench <laughs> vise. <laughs> Why would you have that in there? Good question. I need to take that mic off of <laughs> you. <laughs> I only put it on you just so I can kind of... Look down? Caress your bosoms. <laughs> There's anything else I want to add. Oh, you should have saved it. Dump the keystone in there. And... Pretty good idea. <laughs>